Greetings, friends. Chaos here. Ah, April 1st. What a great time to show your friends how much you care about them by playing pranks on them. In the spirit of April Fools, today I'm going to show you 20 different ways that you can troll your friends in Terraria. I should say that these pranks are meant to be done in good humor, and they're not there to upset anybody. So all of these pranks will be pretty easy to undo and remove, and I do recommend not going overboard pranking your friends. Oh, and expect to be pranked back once you do. While you sit back and enjoy this video, let me know in the comments if you have any of your own pranking stories, Terraria or not, I'd love to hear them. But before we get into the shenanigans, lately, every single time I've been uploading a video, YouTube seems to be purging my subscribers. Every day I gain new subscribers, but on a release day, it drops into the negative suddenly. And I have some people telling me that they were unsubscribed without realizing it. So I would greatly appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. And if you already are, just double check to make sure that you still are. And if you'd like to catch my future videos as soon as they drop, be sure to turn on the bell notifications. With that out of the way, let's get to the pranks. I am joined today by my friend Kushin, who is going to be filling the role of test dummy, uh, I mean assistant. Say hello, Kushin. Hello, Kushin. Sometimes the best pranks are the least intricate. If you can trick your friends into willingly walk into a prank, it's even better. When exploring a new world, people are often on the lookout for dead man's chests, so they try not to fall victim to them. But you can easily get your friends to fall for one anyway. Simply hide away the most obvious parts of the trap, then tell a friend that your inventory is full, but the chest has something that they're looking for inside of it. Sit back and watch the fireworks. This next prank is also one that you could do at any point in the game, as soon as your friends have built a base. If you're a veteran to my channel, I'm sure by now you know all about hoiking. If not, I'll be putting a video out on it later in the month, but essentially it's a glitch in Terraria where players that are inside of a sloped block are automatically pushed out at rapid speeds. Normally, this can only be done with solid blocks, not things like platforms. But thanks to a friend of mine, Blue Jay, I have learned that you can block swap a hoik with a platform, and the semi solid block manages to retain the hoik glitch. This opens up a bunch of new possibilities, but let me show you an extremely easy, yet hilarious and very confusing way to troll your friends with it. Head over to their base with a block, a hammer, and a platform, and right next to their door, place a block. I'm going to be using green painted slime blocks so that it's very easy for you guys to see what I'm doing, but you can use this with any block, with or without paint. Next, we have to shape the block using a hammer. Use this shape if the door is on the left, and flip it to this shape if the door is on the right. Then all you need to do is simply block swap to trade the block that you used with any platform. You can also paint the platform to help disguise it if you want. I recommend adding two more normal platforms above it to blend them into the doorway even more. Even though this platform looks perfectly normal, you have now created a one-way exit. Your friend will be able to walk out of the base, but they will be completely unable to walk in without breaking this platform. If you want to have the opposite effect, where you trap a player inside of their base, just flip the block shapes in the opposite direction and follow the same steps. This will let anybody walk in, but nobody can walk out. Despite the simplicity of the materials in that last prank, I know the mechanics might be a bit confusing, so let's jump to something even more simplistic. Head underground on your server and find a nice pit full of enemies or lava. Use a hook to grapple to the ceiling above the pit. Then, as excited as possible, tell your friends that you have found something incredibly insane with the world generation and that they have to see it. If you get them excited enough, they won't want to walk to you. They'll want to get there as soon as possible. Hop onto the same team color as them and as soon as they wormhole to you, they'll fall straight into the pit and die. What a glorious sight indeed. I'm sure they're glad they had to see that. 
This next prank uses two of the jankiest objects in Terraria, the teleporter and the target dummy. I'm going to be making a built it video in the future that dives into the insane uses of these two items, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to show you how the teleporters can allow furniture items to float and what exactly that does to target dummies and how you can use that to prank your friends. Craft up a bunch of target dummies and buy a handful of teleporters. Go to a location where you know that a friend is about to build or they're planning to build and get yourself into the sky above that location. Place a row of temporary blocks to allow you to build in the sky and make it as wide as the area that your friends are planning to build in. On top of the temporary blocks, place a row of teleporters with another row of teleporters directly on top. And on top of those, place the target dummies. Now it's time for the glitch. Teleporters can only be placed on top of blocks. Under normal conditions, they do not float. But when you break the bottom teleporter in this situation, the top one realizes that it shouldn't be there and it automatically breaks as well. But the target dummy above that doesn't get the same memo and it decides it's perfectly okay just to sit in the air. You now have a floating target dummy. But what exactly does that do to prank your friend? Well, target dummies are extremely unique in that they are both a piece of furniture as well as an NPC. When you attack a target dummy, you aren't actually hitting the furniture item. You're hitting an invisible NPC that spawns in front of it. But this NPC is like any other in the game in that it is affected by gravity and it will fall when there are no blocks below it. So when the furniture version of the target dummy stays floating in the air, the invisible NPC, or as we call it, the ghost dummy, falls downwards until it reaches a block. You can test this theory out by trying to attack the floating dummy and seeing that nothing happens there. But if you go to the blocks below it and you attack, you will hit the ghost dummy. The best part is, since the ghost dummy is an NPC, it'll prevent block placement in the area that it's sitting, so you can really confuse your friends by preventing them from placing blocks with these ghost dummies. Breaking the dummy above will also delete the ghost, and it will fix this prank very easily. Using that same teleporter trick, you can sneakily hide a rolling cactus or a boulder above the doors in your friend's base. Once the cactus or the boulder is floating in place, the next time that door swings open, it will cause the trap to trigger. Just be careful that town NPCs wandering around can trigger this while your friends are nowhere to be seen. If your friend is a builder and happens to love working with stone slab as a floor, you can easily pull off a little fun prank on them. Grab some gray paint and some honey block and swap out sections of the stone slab floor with gray painted honey. As long as they aren't using stone accent slab, the floor and the honey blocks will blend together, looking extremely similar, and anytime your friend walks over it, they're going to be slowed to a crawl. And while you're in the base, why not leave a pleasant surprise for them? I've heard somewhere that white noise is soothing or something, maybe. So help your friends out by hiding one of these contraptions below their base. This will be using the ghost dummy mechanics, and it will also require some wiring and teleporters, as well as yellow, green, or red pressure plates to build. Make a small box that has a space of three blocks tall by four blocks wide inside of it. Place a row of four blocks in the center of the box and slope them like this. Then place a teleporter beneath that box and another teleporter somewhere off to the side. Add a few rows of blocks on top of that second teleporter and then put the target dummy on top of those blocks. Connect the two teleporters to a switch and to each other, then activate it. This will teleport the ghost dummy from one teleporter to the other inside of the box, leaving the furniture dummy behind. The ghost dummy is now inside of the box, moving rapidly left and right, being pushed between these two arrows. Now all you need to do is get it to generate sound. Simply place a yellow, green, or red pressure plate on the blocks beneath these arrows, and the soothing, painful, blinding white noise is complete. You don't need to hook it up to anything, this is done. 
Now you just need to cover up the area in dirt and walls so that nothing can be seen and feel free to break the teleporters and remove the wiring so that this is even harder to find. But just remember to not destroy that target dummy. Otherwise the ghost is going to despawn. But seriously, this prank is kind of painful. So uh, use it sparingly. Not all pranking contraptions need to be built at your friends' bases, however. Some can be tucked away in some obscure corner of the map that only you are aware of. For this prank, grab yourself a night logic sensor, some wire, and an announcement box. Connect the night sensor to the announcement box with the wire, and then copy this code, which will be written in the description below so you can easily copy it. And what this code does is change the color of the font of the text that will pop up once the announcement box is activated. When nighttime comes, this will create a text announcement that looks as if a boss was summoned with the appropriate color and all, but nothing was actually summoned. If you're worried that they will catch that the air is getting colder around you announcement is completely missing, worry not. I have used this prank many times and most people don't even notice that the first part wasn't there. This prank is extremely similar to the last one, but it's even more believable, but it also requires to be a little bit more strategic about its placement. Once again, get a night logic sensor and an announcement box, but this time also get a blood monolith and a day logic sensor. Head over to a base or any location where players tend to hang out and connect the night logic sensor to the blood monolith and to the announcement box. Then connect the day logic sensor only to the blood monolith. In the announcement box, use the code that is linked in the description below for the blood moon is rising. Be sure that the monolith and the sensors are hidden underground and out of sight. Now when night falls, a message warning about the blood moon will happen, and the monolith will even make the base appear as if it is a real blood moon, but none of the enemies will actually spawn. The day sensor will turn the monolith back off when the sun rises. For this next prank, I caution you. It will involve summoning a boss automatically, and every time the boss is up, it's going to disable your world's pylon network until the boss despawns or is destroyed, which can take quite a while depending on your world size. But this is one of my favorite and most confusing pranks, so I just had to include it. You'll need some building materials for a very basic NPC house. Then you'll have to work your way down to the underworld. Once there, build this very tiny NPC house, being sure to use the platforms instead of doors. The reason I put the chair and the workbench so high up is so that this house can be only two blocks wide in the area where the guide is going to stand, and that gives him no place to walk. Using the same technique from the hoik prank earlier, we are going to swap this platform out with a block and then shape it like this. Add another block next to it and shape it in the same way. Add one more block below and above it just like this, and then swap the sloped blocks with the platforms. Just beneath the house, if there isn't already one, add a pool of lava. Now move the guide in. Anytime the guide spawns in that house, he's going to walk off to the left into that platform, which will use the hoik glitch to push him straight out of the house and into the lava pool, killing him. Since he's in the underworld, this will also spawn the wall of flesh. Your friends will be extremely confused if everybody's on the surface and the wall of flesh suddenly arrives. They're going to be extremely in danger if they're in the underworld when this happens. Either way, it's absolutely hilarious. But remember, it will break your pylon network for as long as the wall of flesh is alive and this contraption will automatically spawn a new wall of flesh anytime the guide responds. To disable the spawner, simply block off the lava or invalidate the house or move the guide into a new location. And while we are on the topic of pylons, this next prank will teach you how to make yours deadly. I mentioned earlier that the teleporters can make most furniture items float using a glitch. There are two exceptions to this, chests and pylons. But thanks to the masterminds of my viewers during my last livestream, we have figured out a way to create the floating pylon. This prank is pretty simple. 
Take your pylon, use the following glitch to make it float in the air, and put any manner of death trap beneath it. Lava, traps, boulders, enemies, whatever you come up with. To get the pylon to float, start off with the same way that you would with the standard teleporter glitch. Use a row of temporary blocks and two teleporters, one on top of the other. Now, on top of those teleporters, place a row of three metal bars. In this case, I'm using iron bars, but any of them will work. Place the pylon on top of those bars and now break the very bottom teleporter. This will remove both teleporters and the metal bars, but it will leave the pylon floating in midair. And then after that, you can break all of the temporary blocks beneath it. Assuming your pylon is valid, it has two NPCs or is in the correct biome, anytime somebody teleports to your pylon, they will simply fall into whatever death trap you have created below. And if traps are your thing, you'll probably love this next prank. All you need is a geyser, some wire, and a player logic sensor. Pick a location that you want random flames to pop up and dig 12 blocks straight down. At the bottom, place your geyser, and then directly on top of that, place the logic sensor. Connect them with wire, then fill in the gap with whatever block you use to dig the hole, though you'll need to put background walls behind them if they don't already have natural ones there. Now this geyser is completely hidden from view, and anybody who happens to just walk upon that piece of land will get a surprising blast of fire straight into the face. When playing Terraria, we all gather a bunch of materials that we don't really need, and we never really end up using them. They just end up clogging up our inventories or our storage, so why not convert that into a fun prank? Empty your inventory completely and fill it up with all that junk that you don't want anymore, then head over to your friend's spawn point. Toss all of that onto the floor in front of their bed, and the next time that they use their recall, or the next time that they die, their inventory will be flooded with a ton of goodies from you. If you don't want to accidentally pick up the items yourself, be sure to carry around an encumbering stone. Those encumbering stones are really neat. They're very handy if you're doing something stupid like playing on medium core Terraria in master mode with a bunch of friends, but they can also be a bit confusing, especially if you don't realize that you have one. This is why they are perfect as a prank item. Next time you and your friends are out exploring, or even better, during a boss fight or an invasion, drop an encumbering stone at their feet. If they don't notice that they've picked it up, they'll go about their business. A few minutes later, they're going to think that their inventory is full, only to find out that it wasn't at all. I love little harmless pranks like that. Another great way to trick your friends is to give them a bit of a jump scare. Now, in Terraria, that's not exactly the easiest thing to do. You can't really hide anywhere in order to scare them. Or can you? If your friend uses mannequins to decorate their base, grab two wood platforms and when they're away, sneak into their house. Steal their mannequin and the armor on it, and make sure that you are not on the same team color as them, and that you flag yourself for PvP. Yes, this means that they can attack you if they turn PvP on, but the reason that you want to be flagged for PvP is that you will be completely hidden from their map. Place the two wooden platforms where the mannequin used to be and hammer each of them three times so that they are flat on the floor. Put on all of the armor, accessories, and dyes that you just took off of the mannequin and stand in the middle of the two platforms facing the same direction that it was originally facing. While this doesn't look exactly like the mannequin, trust me, they are going to be so used to looking at their base decorations passively, they will not notice it at all. When they return to their base, laugh as they walk by you oblivious. Then laugh even more when after a minute you jump off the stand and start chasing them around with the armor that they've only known to be a decoration. It can be a real surprise when they think their furniture just came to life and it's a ton of laugh if you pull this off without getting caught. It's always a rush when you're able to pull off a prank while being right next to your friend and yet you're still completely unnoticed. And this next prank is no exception. Once again, make sure that you are on a different team color from your friend and that you are flagged for PvP so that you cannot be seen on the map. 
This time, however, grab an invisibility potion and a landmine. Don't wear any gear, items, or accessories that will give your position away. No particles, no eye glow, no pets, no wings. Make no noise. Wear nothing that stands out. Drink the invisibility potion and quickly make your way to your friend. You may need to use multiple potions as the timer is only running for three minutes. Just be sure to not drink one while they're on screen. When you're close to your friend, try and skillfully place a landmine in the path that they're heading. If you pull this off, you can kill them completely unexpectedly without getting yourself blown up in the process, and they may never even figure out that you were there the whole time. As a bit of a prankster myself, I have one rule with my friends. Don't go AFK in game if you don't want to get pranked. There are many things that you could do to somebody if they tend to just walk away from the computer from time to time, but I'm going to share one of my favorites. While they are gone, head over to their character. Surround them in a pile of rolling cactus. When they get back, they're either going to panic and recall away, or flat out get themselves killed. Either way, you are going to have a laugh. While simple pranks like that are great, sometimes it's more rewarding to trick somebody using an intricate optical illusion. This one would be best suited for your own base. The idea behind this prank is pretty simple. We're going to create a completely fake bridge using background walls and actuated blocks. Beneath the bridge will be some lava or some other death trap. You can get pretty creative with how this is pulled off, but the results should be the same. Your friend will see a bridge and attempt to walk over it to get to your base, only to fall into the trap. In this example, I am using white painted sandstone brick wall to emulate gray painted ebon stone brick block. I'm further reinforcing this illusion by using the teleporter glitch to get lamps that float on top of the wall. Their brain is going to subconsciously see the lamps and register the thing below them as a block, at least until they suddenly plummet through it. Okay, Kishin, walk into the house full speed like you own the place. I just... Ow. <laughs> I actually got her with that one. <laughs> Trickery is absolutely amazing for pranks, whether it is an optical illusion or just taking advantage of your friend's inexperience. If you're playing with somebody that is fairly new to Terraria or hasn't played since the 1.4 update was released, swing over to either the Drunk World Seed or the For the Worthy World Seed and grab a red potion. Take this with you to the Normal World Seed where your inexperienced friend is patiently waiting to get pranked. Toss them the red potion and simply say, drink this, it's the most powerful potion in the game. Now, dear viewer, you're not lying to your friend. It is indeed an extremely powerful potion. You may have failed to mention that it's powerfully bad and that it will certainly kill them, but at least you were being honest. And at long last, that brings us to prank number 20. It's simple, and if you're a frequent viewer of the channel, you'll recognize it straight away as it's been played against me many times. But before I get to that, I wanted to thank you guys very much for watching this far into the video. If you have found the tips funny or helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on bell notifications. So the final prank is an absolute favorite of a close friend of mine, Blue Jay, and you may have already seen it on this channel in the Buildy Bunch as well as Terracore, and you'll probably see it again in the future. It's extremely simple. Hunt down the traveling merchant, wait until he's selling lawn flamingos, purchase as many as you can, then scatter them across every tile of your friend's base. What a classic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this fun April Fool's video as much as I enjoyed making it. Be sure to leave a comment telling me if you managed to pull off any of these pranks yourself. Before I go, I wanted to thank my biggest supporters for the month. Matt Dragon, Nate Wiley, 
Dragon Rider, Hippic 3, Duke Samron, and Nick Peasley. And be sure to follow my channel artist, Mythical Water. Her channel is linked in the description below. Also, a thank you to Kushin for helping me out by taking on the role of assistant for today's tutorial. I could not have done this without you. And thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.